Hey guys, Devin here from Baca Burrito, and today we have for you a Drytron deck profile. But before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that we do have an Instagram, at Baca Burrito underscore PC, and a Twitter, at Baca Burrito. Uh, you guys should definitely check us out and follow us there for updates on videos like this, and you guys get to see our thumbnails a little bit early. Um, but yeah, thanks for the support, and stay tuned for the deck profile. All right, and like I said, we're back for you, uh, for you guys here today. We have a Drytron deck profile. However, this deck does also have a Necroz core, so hopefully that's unique. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So, to start off with, we have obviously the three copies of Drytron Alpha Thuban. So, all of the Drytrons have the ability where they cannot be normal summoned or set, but they must be special summoned with the effect of a Drytron, meaning you can't monster reborn them or anything like that. So you contribute one other Drytron or one ritual monster in your hand or on the field, and then special summon this card from your hand or graveyard. Obviously, they special summon in defense position because of the fact that they have 2,000 attack and they're level 1 monsters, so they want you to be at a disadvantage as much as possible, because otherwise that would be kind of unfair it would be like level one beatdown but alpha thuban's uh, unique effect is after he activates his effect uh you're able to search for a ritual monster so that's pretty cool and you can only resolve the effect of alpha thuban once per turn next up we have two copies of zeta and almost everything is the same for example you can only special summon it with a uh, drytron effect you can tribute from the hand or field but his added effect is or its added effect i guess it's a robot um, its added effect is the ability to search for a ritual spell. Next up, we have two copies of Delta Altaeus. Uh, truthfully, I just wanted more names. This could be one copy of Beta, uh, Beta Rastaban. But for me, for now, it is uh, Delta Altaeus. And I like him quite a bit. He, uh, You reveal a ritual in your hand and then draw one card. And last but not least for the Drytron names is two copies of Gamma Eltanen. Um, this one lets you special summon a Drytron from the graveyard, um, and that doesn't it doesn't matter the uh, position. Um, all of these combo super well with the next groups of cards that I'm going to um, be showing you guys. So let's move on to those. So first up, we have two copies of Diviner of the Heralds. Now I'm going to have to read this card to you. If this card is normal or special summon, you could send one fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. And if you do, increase this card's level by the, that monster's level until the end of this turn. If this card is tributed, you can special summon one level two or lower fairy monster from your hand or deck except Diviner of the Herald, and you can only use each effect of Diviner once per turn. So she's really good because of the fact that you're able to send Herald of the Arc Light directly from the extra deck to the graveyard to get a search. Uh, you can also send things like Ava from the deck to the graveyard in order to add another uh, another set of fairies to your hand. Uh, it really depends on what you need. Truthfully, this would be three, but my deck space is a little tight. Going forward, I, I might bump this up to three. Next up, two copies of Ava. Um, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish up to two other light fairy monsters from your field or graveyard and add the same number of level two or lower light fairy monsters with different names from your deck to your hand except Ava. And you can only use this effect once per turn. So the thing is, you typically search Diviner and the next card, I'll go ahead and reveal that, that's a Herald of the Orange Light. So say you have a Diviner in the graveyard or something, or um, it could even be one of the ritual monsters. You banish one copy, you could search one. You banish two, you could search two. So you could get a Diviner and a Orange Light. So it depends what you need. So, Herald of the Orange Light is the next card, obviously. Uh, during either player's turn, when an effect of a monster of an opponent's monster is activated, you can send this card and one other fairy monster from your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. You typically don't want to use its own effect unless you have an Ava in hand, because it can send itself an Ava and then still get another search so you can add another copy. But that being said, you typically want this to be like discard fodder for like uh, Herald of Ultimateness, which I do run in this deck. Next up, we have one copy of Shurit, Strategist of the Necros. Shurit's really cool. So 
If you ritual summon exactly one Necroz ritual monster with an effect that requires the use of monsters, this card can be used as the entire requirement. If this card is tributed by, an, uh, by a card effect, you can add one warrior type Necroz ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, you can only use this effect of Shurit once per turn. So Shurit's really cool uh, because, for example, say you were summoning Trishula, uh, the Necroz Trishula, not the Synchro Trishula you'd be able to use him as the entire uh, requirement. It definitely comes up because you want to search uh, warriors, which would be like uh, Brio or um, Arid Beer. Um, but anyway, Shurit, one of, he's cool. Um, next up, I have one copy of Red Eyes and one copy of Dark Magician. I'm sure you know why these are here, but if you're new to the game, just stay tuned. Two copies of Necroz of Brionic. Again, the, uh, okay. So the reason this isn't three is because the deck space, again, it's pretty tight. Uh, I am I am over 40, um, but again, I just think that each of the cards in this deck are it are necessary for what the deck is aiming to do. Um, so what Brionic does, uh, you can ritual summon this card with any re uh, Necroz ritual spell. Must be ritual summoned without using Necroz of Brionic. Uh, you can only use each of these effects of Brionic once per turn. You can discard this card and add one Necroz monster from your deck to your hand, except Brio. You can target up to two face-up, and then if he's on the field, uh, he has this effect. You could target up to two face-up monsters on the field that were special summoned from the extra deck and shuffle them into the deck. For those of you who weren't playing around 2014-2015, um, Necroz is a deck that specializes in extra deck hate, essentially. Um, most of their effects affect extra deck monsters, they spin them, they negate effects, um, it's really cool, I like them a lot, uh, they were the, the deck I always wanted but couldn't afford back then until they got reprints. Next up, we have two copies of Unicor. Unicor is probably the best Necroz monster, so you can ritual summon this with any Necroz ritual spell, again, that's pretty standard across all the Necroz monsters, um, you can discard this card. Then target one Necroz card in your graveyard, except Unicor, and add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Unicor once per turn. But his on-field effect is negate the effects of face-up monsters on the field that were special summoned from the extra deck. So, for example, say your opponent makes like a bunch of negate, a bunch of monster negates, right? And then you just ritual summon Unicorn. All of their entire board, if they were from the extra deck, they just get turned off. For example, like an Opelosa would just be zero attack. And I think that's really cool. Um, and he's just small enough so that your opponent could out it in a rather consistent way. But he's just big enough to like not be handled by like a regular main deck monster. All right. Uh, next up in the ritual lineup, we have uh, Drytron Medionis Draconids, um, and his effect says you can ritual summon this card with Medionis Drytron. Your opponent cannot target this card with monster effects. If the total levels of the monsters used for its ritual summon are two or less, this card can attack all special summon monsters your opponent controls once each. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can banish monsters from your graveyard whose combined attack equals exactly 2,000 or 4,000, then target one face-up uh, one one face card your opponent controls for every 2,000 attack of the total and send that card slash cards to the graveyard. You can only use each effect of Draconids once per turn. Draconids is awesome. He's a uh, Dragoon out, but he also has 4,000 attack, can attack all special summon monsters once each, and then as an added bonus on the opponent's turn as a quick effect, you can just uh, get rid of non-targeting get rid of cards from their side of the field so that's really cool next up herald of ultimateness you're trying to make this as quickly and consistently as possible when your opponent would special summon a monster or monsters or activate a spell or trap card effect or a monster effect quick effect you can send one fairy monster from your hand to the graveyard negate the special summon or activation and if you do destroy that card herald of ultimateness is so good as an omni negate and it's not even a once per turn so let's say you have a copy of ava a copy of herald uh let's just say it's a copy of ava and a copy of herald and your opponent goes to activate a card you can get rid of the herald first and negate the first one then get rid of the Ava on the second card. And because you have a Herald in the grave, 
You can then banish that copy of Herald and add a Herald of Origin Light from your deck to your hand. And then now you have another negate for Herald of Ultimateness. I think that's really busted and this card is so good. He also has a 3000 uh, defense and a 2000 attack. So he's not small by in any sense of the imagination. So this is a really difficult card for a lot of decks to deal with. The only thing you have to worry about running into is whether or not you still have the resources in order to keep using the negates. But sometimes one or two negates is enough, truthfully. Um, next up, we have Necroz of Eridbeer. It's a level 11 that says, um, you can ritual summon this card with any Necroz ritual spell. Must be ritual summoned without using any level 10 monsters. Sorry, it's a level 10. Uh, you can only use each of these effects of Eridbeer once per turn. Discard this card, tribute up to two Necroz monsters from your hand and or field, and if you do, send that many Necroz cards from the deck to the graveyard. If this was a pure Necroz deck, which I may do in the future, that would be a good effect. However, you never use that for this deck. The effect that matters is, when a monster effect is activated, quick effect, you can tribute one monster from your hand or field, negate the activation, and if you do, banish that card. The thing about that is, since he tributes from hand or field, that will proc some of the Cyber Dragon effect. Uh, sorry, not Cyber Dragon. Cyber Angel effects that you have uh, coming up shortly. Very good card. Very, very underrated. Uh, he has 3,300 attack, 3,200 defense. So he's almost a world beater as well. Next up, Necroz of Valkyris. Just one of... You don't really summon him. You can, but you don't really need to. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish one Necroz card from your graveyard and discard this card, negate the attack, then end the battle phase. So in a pinch, this card can get you out of a tricky situation because sometimes Drytrons, uh, they do tend to brick or if you only have like, say, ritual spells, whatever. As long as there's a Necroz card in the graveyard, you're able to activate this effect. This effect is live. It just ends the battle phase after negating the attack. And so you get to save yourself from potentially lethal damage. So yeah, I like Necroz of Valkyries a lot. A lot of people don't. Again, you could cut him if you want, make the deck a little closer. Uh, you could probably replace this with an extra copy of, um, probably an extra copy of Brianic or another copy of Herald. Next up, you have the Cyber Angels. It is Natasha and Benten. Benten says when she's tribute, tributed, uh, you can add one light fairy monster from your deck to your hand. It also has a ritual um, summon effect. However, it never comes up. Okay, cool. Natasha is the weird one because I was um, I was in between her and uh, Edithin for a long time. However, I did decide on this one due to the effect due to the effects, so I'm going to go ahead and read those for you. You can ritual summon this with Machine Angel Ritual. Once per turn, you can target one face-up monster you control. Gain life points equal to half its attack. When a ritual monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack. If this card is in the graveyard, you can banish one other Cyber Angel monster from your graveyard. Then target one monster your opponent controls, special summon this card, and if you do, take control of that monster. So, she can help you win in time by adding life points to your life point total. Uh, so you can, you know, like if it's a close game, you can just cheese out that win. Also, she can negate an attack, which is really, really beneficial because she's 1,000-1,000. So not a lot struggles with her. The issue, the issue that the opponent has to deal with is the fact that if she's in Grave, you can just banish one other Cyber Angel and then just take control of one of your opponent's monsters. And then you can use her other effects, for example, to like gain the life points of whatever monster you took. So that's a really good card. Um, I like Natasha. And the last monster is one copy of Necroz of Clausulus. You can discard him and search for a Necroz spell or trap, but there are no traps, so a Necroz spell. His second effect, uh, quick effect, you can target one face-up monster on the field that was special summoned from the extra deck until the end of this turn that target's attack becomes zero. Also, that target's effects are negated. So like I said, uh, this is a really good card for outing like problematic uh, extra deck monsters. And after you discard him, you can actually special summon him using the uh, Drytron uh, ritual spell from the graveyard. First up for the spell cards, uh, that was it for the monsters. We have three copies of Drytron Nova. This card just says special summon one Drytron monster from your deck, but destroy it during the end phase. You can only activate one Nova per turn. Uh, that's this card. 
Uh, you cannot special summon monsters except monsters that cannot be normal summoned or set the turn you activate this card. So it's not saying you can't normal summon, it's only saying you can't special summon. Important distinction, so all monsters that are in the extra deck need to be special summoned first so you, you're uninhibited. The only things you wouldn't be able to special summon are something like you couldn't special summon Herald or um, Orange Light or Ava for whatever reason or um, Dark Magician or Red Eyes. But again... Hardly comes up. This card is so good. Next up, we have two copies of Cyber Emergency. It says add one light machine that cannot be normal summoned or set, or one Cyber Dragon monster from your deck to your hand. If the activation of this card in its owner's possession was negated by your opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can discard one card, add this card to your hand. You can only activate one Cyber Emergency per turn. So the thing about Cyber Emergency is not only does it protect itself if it's negated, what I find is you can f see a newer player, a less experienced player, by using this card. What they'll try to do is negate the effect, not realizing that it has self-recursion. But this card searches all of your Drytrons, because if you didn't know, they were all machines that cannot be normal summoned or set, um, and they're all light. So this card is super good. I could also see myself bumping this up to three if I was running the pure Drytron version. For the version I'm running now, two Cyber Emergency is uh, perfect. Next up, Two copies of Preparations of Right. Preparation of Rights, sorry. Um, add one level seven or lower ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Then you can add one ritual spell from your graveyard to your hand. So it doesn't specify that that ritual spell has to go with the monster, so that, that helps out a lot. Um, the ones that you'd be most likely to search would be uh, your copies of Bryonic, if you don't have, like, if you already have um, Ben 10 or Ben 10. Uh, you could also search Clausulus. Um, and I believe, uh, and Natasha as well. Um, other than that, I don't think there are any, oh, and Unicorn you could search. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, so you could search most of your rituals, ritual monsters with that. It's also important to note that you don't have to add the spell. That's an optional effect. Next up, we have two copies of Medionis Drytron, two copies of Necroz Kaleidoscope, one copy of Necroz Cycle, and one copy of Mirror. So Medionis Drytron says this card can be used to ritual summon any ritual monster from your hand or a graveyard. You must also tribute monsters from your from your hand or field whose total attack equal or exceed the attack of the ritual monster you ritual summon. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Drytron monster you control. It loses exactly 1,000 attack until the end of your opponent's turn, and if it does, add this card to your hand. You can only use this effect of Medionis once per turn. So you're able to use it to Ritual Summon as many times as copies you have, um, but you can only recur it one time. The thing about this card is it's so effective because you can use your Ritual Monsters as like discard fodder for other effects and still be able to Special Summon them from the graveyard. So after you tribute a Ben 10, you can bring it back and then tribute it again. Um, so that you could keep doing that because it's not a hard once per turn. You want to because if one gets DD Crowed, um, you don't want to be locked out of the game. Next up, we have two copies of Kaleidoscope, which is by far one of the most unique ritual spells in the entire game, and it's easily my favorite ritual spell in the entire game. So what this card does, this card can be used to ritual summon any Necroz ritual monster. Tribute one monster from your hand or field, or send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. Also, after that, ritual summon any number of Necroz monsters whose total levels exactly equal the level of the monster. So what that means is, for example, if you have a Unicorn in hand and a copy of Clausulus in hand, they equal 7. If you send a level 7 to the graveyard, you're able to ritual summon both of these monsters. So it lets you ritual summon as many monsters as possible that equal the level of the monster sent from the extra deck hand or field. So that card is super great, uh, honestly. I don't understand why they made that card and it's kind of telling because you haven't really seen a card like this since. And again, the last two ritual spells were Necroz Mirror. This one's a little easier to explain. Uh, this card can be used to ritual summon a Necroz Tribute monsters from your hand or field and or banish Necroz monsters from your graveyard, then ritual summon one Necroz monster from your hand whose level equals exactly equals the total levels of those monsters. You can only use the effect of mirror once per turn. 
If you control no monsters, you can banish this card. Oh, sorry, you banish this and a, uh, a Necros monster from your graveyard and add a Necros spell, which is cool. It's Cycle. This card can be used to ritual summon any Necros ritual monster, again, like the rest of them. Tribute monsters from your hand or field, then ritual summon one Necros ritual monster from your hand or graveyard, whose level equals exactly the total levels of those monsters. You can only use this effect of Cycle once per turn. If you control no monsters, you can add... You can banish this card and one Necroz monster to add a Necroz spell from your deck to your hand. Next for the one ofs, we have one copy of Foolish Burial. Typically, you want to see one of your Drytron cards in the graveyard. Um, that way, you can uh, tribute something else to special summon themselves. One copy of Drytron Fafnir. Uh, when this card it is activated, you can add one Drytron spell or trap from your deck to your hand, except Fafnir. Uh, the activation and the activated effects of ritual spell cards cannot be negated, which is a really cool form of protection. Think like Magical Meltdown, but for rituals. Once per turn, if a monster is normal or special summoned, face up while you control a Drytron monster, except during the damage step, you can reduce the, uh, that monster's level by 1 per 1,000 of its current attack. Uh, minimum level of 1, obviously. For the rest of this turn... Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, that that effect lasts till the end of the turn, and then you can only use you can only activate one Fafnir per turn. Uh, it's okay, I only run one. And the last card is one copy of Red Eyes Fusion. Uh, this card says Fusion summon one Fusion monster that lists Red Eyes monsters as materials from your extra deck using monsters from your hand, deck, or field as Fusion materials. Um, you cannot, yeah. You cannot normal or special summon other monsters the turn you activate this card. You can only activate one Red Eyes Fusion per turn. Uh, there is a way around that last caveat, not the Red Eyes Fusion part, the first part. And it is in the extra deck, so we're going to go ahead and move on there. Um, also, shout out to Imperium Duelist for the... They're the Cherubim Border Sleeves, I think they're called. Uh, I think they look great with most of my extra deck. For the extra deck, we have one copy of Link Karibo. It just requires one level one monster. Yeah, the... Uh, uh, the turning the attack to zero comes up rarely, um, but sometimes you just need the uh, Drytron monster in the graveyard. Next, you have one copy of Verte Anaconda. So Verte Anaconda allows you to pay two thousand and then act and then send a fusion spell from your fusion spell from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, this would be your target. And then it copies those effects. You can still special summon for the rest of that turn, like bef as long as it's as long as you activate this last, like this combo. Uh, the only downside is like when you hard draw Red Eyes Fusion. You but yeah, Verte Anaconda is really cool. He also has another uh, quick effect that turns a monster into dark. Um, it hardly ever comes up. If I was running Super Poly, it might come up quite a bit. Uh, the next card is Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, and IP Mascarena. I just grouped these together because pretty much the same thing um this card lets you discard a card and pop a spell or trap on the field that my opponent controls um this card lets you spin a monster back to the deck for discarding a card and then this one is a quick effect link summon during the opponent's turn so all of these are really cool and when this when that happens it gives them uh, protection but it also says a link monster that used this card as material cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So it really comes up for some protection. Sometimes you want to just summon Unicorn. Sometimes you want to summon Opelosa, for example. And if they have the protection for IP, that's even better. Um, the next card, like I said, is Opelosa, Bow of the Goddess. It takes two plus monsters with different uh, with different names except tokens. You can only control one, the fun stuff. The original attack becomes 800 times the number of cards used for its link summon. And then it has the effect where you can lower its attack by 800 and negate monster effects. Um, and that's not a hard one to return. It's as many times as you could pay the 800, which is really cool. But again, if you summon her with IP, she has protection from being destroyed by card effects. Other than that, there's not really too much to talk about with the links. Uh, that is it for the links. Next up, we have the Xyz monsters. We have one copy of Assembled Nightingale, one cop, uh, two copies of Mu Beta Fafnir, and one copy of Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus. So this one is the easiest, well, let me do it like this. This one is the easiest to explain. You make this with two level, Mu Beta with two level one monsters. So what its effect says is, when you ritual summon, you can detach a material from this card. You can detach a material from this card as monsters required for the ritual summon. You can only use each of the following effects of Mu Beta once per turn. If this card is Xyz summon, you could send one Drytron card from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, when you're up 
opponent activates a spell or trap card while you control a machine ritual monster quick effect you can detach one material from this card and negate it and if you do destroy that card that last one hardly ever comes up but it's good to have a little bit of a spell trap negation um but what you really want it for is the ability to, to, to detach cards um for the ritual summon so say you have two drytrons as the material for this card you're able to detach them and use them for the ritual summon of cards instead and you'd still be able to keep this extra body on, on field this one you have lyralusk assembled nightingale two or more level one monsters this card gains 200 attack for each material again it doesn't matter this card can attack directly while this card has material it can attack a number of times each battle phase up to the number of Xyz material attached to it. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one material until the end of the turn. Lyra loose monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Also, you take no battle damage. But you really want it for the attacking directly because by it attacking directly, it fulfills the summoning requirement for double a zeus as we all know fear and love double a zeus says his requirement uh, once per turn if an xyz monster battled this turn you can also xyz summon divine arsenal double a zeus by using one xyz monster you control it's important to note that it doesn't have to be the same xyz monster that attacked um also you transfer the materials from that card to this one quick effect you can detach two materials from this card Send all other cards you control from the field to the graveyard. Once per turn, if another card or cards you control... Oh, I'm sorry, I misread that. It's all cards on the field other than this one get sent to the graveyard. If another card or cards you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand, deck, or extra deck to this card as material, which is awesome. And also, it's a 3k body, so that card's actually really hard to out for a lot of decks. Next, we have two copies of Herald of Arclight. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a ritual a ritual monster or a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. You can technically uh, synchro summon this. You don't. Any monster that's sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. When a spell or trap, oh yeah, yeah, then it's an Omni Negate. Which is cool, but you never summon it. I have, this is my secret spice, one copy of Leo, the Keeper of the Sacred Tree. It's one tuner, one non-tuner. This face-up card on the field cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects except during your main phase two. The effect does not matter, you just send it off a kaleidoscope so that you could summon um, Brionic and uh, Unicorn. Really cool card. I like it. Next up, the fusions. We have one copy of Elder Entity, Neth Elder Entity Nethys. Um, you only use her effect that when she's sent to the graveyard, you can pop a card on the field, uh, which is really cool. Um, and then you have the Granddaddy uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. This card is really cool. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. Neither player can target this card with card effects. During your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. You can use this effect a number of times per turn up to the number of normal monsters used as fusion material for this card. So for example, in this deck, I would be using Red Eyes and Dark Magician, so you could use that effect twice. That's really busted, honestly. Once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can discard one card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. And if you do that, this card gains a thousand attack. Truthfully, this card sometimes feels like a create a card, but, and I see why, like, lower tier decks struggle with this, but this deck really needs it, because sometimes, well, like, if they have the droll, you really have to try your best to, like, get to Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, so that you have some kind of defensive play for the next turn. But yeah, that being said, that's been the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know what you'd like to see next time. I also have a side deck for this. I can post that on our Instagram about... I'll post that on the Instagram about two days after this video goes up so that everybody can see that. Again, we're at Bacabrito underscore PC. Um, if you like this video, leave a comment down below of what's a deck profile you guys would like to see in the future. And if you prefer deck profiles with in-person cards, let me know that too. Because um, I do like doing both formats where we do like the online version, but that's just because I don't always have everybody's deck available or all of the cards. But if these get popular, who knows, we could change that real quick. Um, anyway, have a good one. We've been Baca Burrito. You guys have been awesome. Catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.